Whether you need information, tutorials, products, or simply connections to other tiny boaters around you, we have it all right here. What's going on everyone? Hope you're enjoying your summer. This is the next video in series for the Tracker V18 Aluminum Bass Boat Restoration. If you want to see the entire series raw with like lots of exclusive footage, barely any edits, you want to see it all now, there's close to 30 videos already in the public playlist, but they're for members only. So if you pick the right appropriate tier, it's the highest tier, you can have access to not only that one, but access to all the other videos in the playlist. For every major boat that I've ever done, there's a playlist now with public videos in it. And then attached behind the public videos are all the member exclusive videos. And also, if you're a patron, you've already had the, the whole series for, you know, a few weeks now. Whether you're a member here or you're a patron over there, check them out. They're there. Also, we have aluminum kits. We we're trying to make a boat in a box kit. So essentially, you would have everything you need to put a boat together if you have the mechanical inclination and will to do so. And we're trying to really streamline that situation and that process and get it going but we do have kits i'm going to be probably unboxing one and getting that video out we're going to do that here pretty quickly and we got some other cool things coming up but check that out this video is all about mainly how we finished the front framing and then mainly the rod locker because the rod locker itself was a fairly tedious process to get close to 20 tubes in there and we're just going to show you how we finished that and then how we leveled out all the rest of the framing and then the next video we will really get into how we decorated the routing and how we skin the frame. Check it out. So here we are, about to frame the rod locker. Before that, I chose to redo parts of the frame to bring them flush, because I'm gonna end up skinning this frame. It's the first time I've ever done it. You're not going to skin the frame or overlay it with some sort of vinyl. There's no point in making it flush, but because we wanted it flush and because we were running the whole rim around into a flush spectrum, we just made it flush. Here we are going to use the old deck to template out the new deck. And to do that, we're putting it where it used to be, tracing out where the new compartments are going to be. That way, when I go to cut them, they'll all just come straight. We had some inside info from one of the tracker techs that actually worked on this boat back in the day to make sure you have as many sections attached to the side rails there to make sure the frame is stiff and it doesn't try to buckle in when it goes on plane. Also at this time with the frame level, we are putting all the dry hatch lips and the four compartments surrounding the rod locker. The more important part of this is the rod locker doesn't have its own dry hatch lip. We're actually gonna put a drain in the rod locker section because any freestanding water that hits the deck to make sure it doesn't just stay there and stagnate and eventually overtake into the hatch, you have to have a runoff. So the rod locker is going to be the inside runoff and we'll have a drain port for it later on as the build progresses. Those side brackets are put into fairly major sections, the likes of which I cut the initial frame out from before. And the other side brackets are pretty plentiful. Right in those sections I just attached entire pieces of sheet metal directly from that frame to the other and that stiffened it up substantially. So what we're dealing with here is this beam is really important. Making sure you have beams to all these major brackets. These are all brackets and major sections that help the boat from like flexing in and pulling in like this when they hit waves. Like you definitely don't want your, your like hold to start flexing and bending and folding everything we, can, we possibly can. So they had they had a pretty robust frame in here, but it was only tack welded into, into four sections. So we put joints in all those major sections to include more. We have like full on sheeting attaching all the sections to the inner core of the frame. But we still have to figure out a way to, to link this. It's really important that I find a way now to keep that structural beam pretty sound while still adding a section in that's going to support the rest of the front frame and allow me to add a recessed foot pedal tray. This also has to be done before I can even start the rod locker. Because the rod locker is going to have so many tubes and it's going to utterly flood the entire front of the boat all the way into the bow. And without this done first, there's just no way I can get that done. So we're going to tie all the other major sections together, all the sections that were cut away, all these sections that are still showing available tubing. We are going ahead and do that. T-framing aluminum together, riveting it, giving it a fairly copious amount of rivets per each actual attachment spread. Three to like five. The more you have, the better the joint. 
Normally I would run a piece of angle from that section all the way to the front, but because we have no way to put under supports, we're going to have to run tubing. Tubing's the only thing that's structurally sound enough to run from that part to that point and still be free enough to hold the deck up and not ever be hindered by the tubes like flooding underneath it. Our bigger thing is we need to line this up. Now contrary to popular belief, this whole thing is not actually straight. After we made this part as straight as can be, because it's only going to be so straight because the entire centerpiece that we didn't get from the boat is not exactly straight, but we really need that centerpiece for a lot of reasons, so we kept it in. We're going to go on to it now. The reason why we kept the metal section here is because it's going to serve as the major platform for the entire rod locker system. We're going to have to cross beam in the middle of it and add an additional wall for the faceplate, and those are going to have to match up. In order for them to match up, we're going to do the first wall. To accomplish this, we are using a bimetal hole saw to cut a hole out that is more or less just over an inch and a half thick to fit inch and a half PVC tubing. We're going to try and run 17 of these. We did the first wall because without the first wall, we couldn't really trace out a template for the second wall. Once we had the second wall, we covered it with gator skins because we're going to have to actually heat all these tubes up. And so to make a face frame covering, like a decorative covering with anything else like turf or carpet, would have melted on the spot with a heat gun that we have to use. Using this double wall section, it would have made a really, really good place to put some additional foam. Just didn't have any on hand, but it made a nice little pocket there. And the foam around the tubes, remember, that will solidify the tubes to where they're never going to move again. They're just going to stay there. Overall, we have 17 holes. I really wanted 20 but we're just going to have to make do with 17. We could really push it, but I don't really know how much that would benefit us. We are tapering and putting in countersink rivets into the top of the frame because we're going to skin it later. But before we can even do that, we really have to focus on all these rod tubes. Before we can even really fabricate anything without damaging it with heat, we have to get these tubes in first. To taper these tubes, you have to put a fair amount of heat evenly around the end, and then you got to shove a bottle in there and hold it there until it cools and forms. And then that will look really, really nice. That'll help us a lot later with having to secure the tubes. And that will help from breaking off eyes in your rods. You might have to go in there and do a little residual sanding if you discolored it, which we had to do for most tubes, but that's just what it took because we put a seen amount of tubes in here. And to fit all those tubes up the front tapering in there, we had to actually flood the entire tube with heat at certain points in time that you'll see that happening later. That wasn't really a prevalent issue until you start getting to the outside tubes like we are now, where see how it's bending on that very, very tube. We reheat that tube so the very, very bend is at the very, very top of the boat in the front and the taper. So the rod tube stays perfectly straight for most of its travel. And then after that, we just tie in the rest of the frame. We didn't overlap the 1 16th, even though we could have, but we made it flush because we're going to skin it. This is the first time we've ever done a skin on top, and so that's why I went through all the trouble to taper and flush mount and do all this. It actually gets really exciting because we stuck so much extra stuff into the boat. Now, every last little part of investment you do to the boat subsequently benefits everything else we do. Part of that was actually stepping up our foam game and really learning how to route the foam to where it really, really pops. And then accentuating the entire boat with LEDs throughout the entire thing, which made this one pop really nice too. We then further accentuate the frame on the top where the exposed ends are by wrapping it with Gator Skin Soft Touch. We will be showing you a full tutorial on that, along with how to apply turf to a wooden deck. We already showed you how to apply it to aluminum. To apply it to wood is not very hard. And the payoff, if you can put up with it, is pretty nice. We also had to do line turf. I wasn't expecting line turf. I didn't design the frame for line turf prior to it. So having to apply this was so much fun. I can't wait to show all of you. If you're new to this channel or have questions, check us out on our main site because we have the tutorials link that links you to all of our tutorials and videos by section of the boat. Any question you want answered. Plus, we are starting a new series coming up of just frequently asked questions. Nothing but questions answered in that series. Stay tuned. Stay tuned, everyone. The next video is how we stepped up our routing game for the foam and how we skinned the frame. Both very cool things to do. It's all coming right now very soon.